Good afternoon. I'm Sue Lowry Barbieri, and I'm a fisheries biologist here at FWRI, focusing on marine fisheries issues. I have worked here for the past 17 years. Twelve of those were half time when I focused uh, more on my family and raising our children. Um, but for the past five years, I've been working here full time and really just having. Uh, wonderful time, a little bit like a kid in the candy store, um, in terms of being able to do integrative science and work with so many great people here at FWRI. But I wanted to start, I guess, um, in terms of getting to know me with a story about how I made this career choice um, to get interested in fisheries science. So I was a Peace Corps volunteer in uh, West Africa, Senegal. And I lived in a really small village called Wali Jala, which actually means to spend the night laughing in Pular. And I did a lot of that. I really came to love the people that I lived with and learned a lot from them. And one of the things that was really different about their culture from ours is how little protein they had. So they would eat meat maybe three times a year, and their major source of protein was fish. The fish had been so terribly overfished in their river once monofilament gillnets were um, introduced that literally the size of the fish that the fish lady would bring around in the morning trying to sell to us was about four inches. So you'd look at postcards in the marché in the market from just ten years before and the size of those fish were ten times larger. So it was really clear that this was something that was impacting the people that I came to love, their ability to um, ha uh, manage their resources and, and what sorts of sources of protein they had. And it got me very interested in um, pursuing a career in science and doing the type of science that would help us better understand how to harvest resources sustainably. So I'd like to talk a little bit about a study that we've been doing for the past three years. Um, it's just been an incredible experience to work with an amazing team um, on a red drum, red drum population, spawning population, size and structure. Um, and an opportunity to use a lot of emerging technology um, in integrative science. To start with the team, because I think that's one of the things that's really a wonderful um, component of FWRI is that you have a lot of really excellent scientists that are working together in one institute. So our team includes a geneticist, uh, Mike Tringali, a stock assessment scientist, uh, Mike Murphy, an expert on red drum um, sub-adults and juveniles, uh, Brent Winner, and then two field experts, part of my team that we've worked together for 14 years, um, Sarah Burnsed and Joel Bickford. And they're really the ones that take some of my crazy ideas and help make sure we can make them work in the field. So that, what was the idea? The idea was, let's see if we can um, hire some purse saners. And we worked with this great group out of Johnny Banyas, um group out of Cortez. We hired them to capture some of these aggregations. So red drum um, have really strong schooling instinct, instinct, and they form these huge spawning aggregations in the fall, and they spawn off of Tampa Bay. And you can see these aggregations from the air. So we set up multiple different ways that we were going to study what was going on. We looked at um, aerial surveys to look at where the aggregations occurred and when they occurred, and if that differed um, by year. And it's just amazing. Some of these aggregations just from the surface, you can see 10,000 fish. And I think that that grabs the imagination um, when you see that many individuals in one place. You know, it's like monarch butterflies or wildebeest. There's something just really extraordinary about that site. And it makes you want to understand what are the processes that lead to this, this spectacle that you get to see. We hired the Persaners to capture um, the aggregations or portions of the aggregations and then we um, set up these special sampling tables which Joel Bickford designed so that we could um, have the fish kept in the persane and they would get dip netted out and put into these special tables with running water so that we could work them up without having to kill them and what we would do is we would get a genetic sample um, a sample of reproductive state and the size of the fish and we could um, sample up to a thousand fish in a day and all these fish are being released alive so typically these types of studies the fish get sacrificed to get this type of data to understand what's going on um, and this was just a great opportunity that the type of data we needed we didn't have to sacrifice them and some of the things you learn. So one of the most amazing things I've seen in these three years of this study is seeing the released fish swim around and 
swim up and down on the outside of the net waiting for their schoolmates to be released. So there's just really strong schooling instinct and these behaviors that you just would never know if you didn't get to see them or study them in their natural environment. The way this research is helping us better understand how to manage fish species and to understand what's going on with red drum um, is manifold. Um, the most important one is that red drum, the adult population, has not had a fishery since the late 1980s when there was concern that it would crash, and so we don't have estimates of abundance. So what we're doing with this study is using um, acoustic telemetry to understand the probability that fish were occurring in the area where we had the purse singers sample the fish, and then we use the genetic um, tags. So with genetics, just like with forensics, you can identify the individual fish. And you can identify if that same fish got captured in a consequent year. And based on that, how many do you recapture and what was the probability the fish would be in an area where it could be recaptured, we can estimate the actual spawning population size. The other thing that's really important from this work in terms of understanding sustainability is understanding um, spawning grounds and how spawning grounds are used. So if you have particular areas that are spatial hotspots that are especially productive in terms of spawning and fish return to those spots year after year after year to spawn, um, it's really important that we make sure that those have some level of protection. Hopefully, in this little interview, I've made it clear that my two greatest passions are my family and my research. Um, I love them both. I've learned so much from both of them. And I can't thank FWRI enough for giving me the opportunity to excel at both of them.